And so I just want to um, start out um, by introducing myself. I know most of you people. My name is um, Jamie Millspa, and I'm over a 10-year crew member here in Southeast Michigan. And I'm one of the co-chairs for the Professional Development Committee um, for the last three years. Um, so we've gotten to put on a lot of um, great programs and really excited about the mentorship program um, that we've started up. I'm also a design director at Newman Smith Architecture and I've worked with a number of you amazing people throughout the years. And I'm also a um, full-time mom to a senior this year, Avery, and my son's a sophomore at South Lion East. His name is Carson. And so um, I also have some parenting experience as well. So um, I'm honored to be leading the discussion today um, with all of you along with Lisa Drulard. Thank you, Jamie. Um, yes, hi everyone. I'm Lisa Drulard, and I've been a member of CREW for seven years. All of that time has been spent on the Professional Development Committee. I'm also a project manager in the Land Surveying Department at Atwell. And besides surveying, Atwell also provides civil engineering, construction management, and services and natural resources. Um, like Jamie, I have a couple high schoolers as well, so Hopefully we'll both be throwing some graduation parties this summer, right? Hopefully. <laughs> um, so let's get started. Um, I hope by now all of you have had a chance to check out our mentorship spreadsheet. But if you haven't yet, I'm gonna run through some of the basics. We'll also have a discussion section at the end. So if you wanna put questions in the chat, we can go back to them later or we can just cover them at that time. Um, first of all, you should have received a link and instructions within the past week or so from the Crew Detroit mentorship account, as well as a Crew Detroit admin email that contained a link. If you didn't receive either of these, please let me know and we'll get it over to you. Contact information for myself and Annette Popiel Hammerly will be on one of the next slides. So when you open up the spreadsheet for the first time, it should open to the welcome sheet which contains the four steps to using the program. It also might be helpful for you to bookmark the link to find it easier in the future. Uh, next, you'll go to the second tab, which is the mentor sheet. And there's a lot of information on here, so you'll probably need to adjust the zoom to see it all. And you'll be able to do that up in the top left corner of the spreadsheet. Now, we truly believe everyone can be a mentor in at least one of our 40 wide-ranging topics, so please be sure to add your name here and check off one or more items. You'll also need to insert your contact information and some details about yourself. Uh, remember, we want the mentees to be comfortable reaching out to you, but we also um, need to be respectful of time constraints, so be as detailed as possible. Do you have any specialties or interests? Do you have a preferred method of communication or time of day for communication? Make sure to add this information to help things go smoothly. Um, on the third tab, the mentee sheet, we really want to see everyone add their names here as well. Um, this sheet is less pressure though. So even though we encourage everyone to sign up as a mentor, we, we do understand that not everyone is comfortable with that. So um, please at least sign up on the mentee sheet. This contains all the same topics, but this time you check the ones that you wanna learn more about. Crew Detroit will use this to help provide you, our members, with the kind of content that you want. And then there's also a fourth tab called resources that will be used to list good books, articles, and podcasts. This tab will be constantly updated throughout the year, so don't forget to check it out. Um, now, here's my contact information along with Annette's. If you have any problems or questions, please reach out to one of us for help. Um, finally, remember that the mentee is responsible for reaching out to a mentor. So it might be a good idea to send an introductory email outlining the topic you want to discuss and what you're hoping to learn or achieve from your mentor. And this can help set the tone for the first contact. Um, being a mentor does not have to be a large time commitment. The two of you can decide how often you want to communicate and by what means. And always remember to thank your mentor and be respectful of their time. We really hope the mentorship program can help everyone in at least some small way. Good dialogue on a personal level can lead to transformational thinking and an open exchange of ideas, allowing both the mentor and the mentee to learn, explore, and grow. 
And one great way to help make this happen is to enhance your listening skills. So Jamie is going to share some tips that all of us can use to be more successful listeners. Thanks, Lisa. <clears throat> yeah, we know that um, taking time out of your day to be a mentor um, or also taking time out of your professional life to you know, be a mentee and work with a mentor is, is a lot of um, extra time and precious time. And so we wanted to um, share some tips and tricks on these Mondays to just kind of, you know, help you get more out of those sessions. So we recently met with <clears throat> Crew Nova in Northern Virginia and uh, Miriam and um, Joyce um, talked to us about some suggestions and topics that they um, kind of featured for their mentorship program and that they found helpful. Um, some others, uh, some better than others. And one today that we're going to be discussing is 10 ways to be more of an effective listener. So you can use these listening tips obviously during your mentor-mentee meetings, but um, it can probably also be pretty valuable in your personal life with your spouse, your kids, or your professional life with coworkers, friends. And um, so this is just one of those things that is just always a good reminder. Um, so that's what we're gonna talk about today. <clears throat> On May 17th, which is um, two months from now, we're gonna um, also look at um, how we self-sabotage and what some of those saboteurs are and how we can combat those. Um, and then we're going to take a little break in the summer because we know there's a lot going on. And then um, now back in September 13th, we're going to reach out and um, team up with outreach and talk about motivation and how to get motivated, or get motivated to start in a new year. And then in November, we're hoping to do a recap and share some of the successful um, stories um, that we have from our Crew Detroit mentorship um, first year experience and, and learn from those so that we can make this a better program in the future. So... Now to kick off the discussion for today, we're going to focus on the 10 steps to effective listening um, as described by Forbes author, um, Diane Schilling. So Diane is an education author and has been published in many topics that I find fascinating and <laughs> things that um, we could all take um, and use in our professional development. And, and one is taking charge of organizational conflict as well as how to be a happier you. And that's next on my reading um, because I know this year's brought me down a little bit. So. Um, that's another thing um, that's on my topic is to, to read that book of hers. But we um, took the information today from one of her articles and um, thought it was pretty insightful and helpful and has some pretty good tips. So with that, we'll get started. The first tip that she has is to make good eye contact. And um, I know that is so hard, um, especially today, um, or but it's also more important today because we're all speaking with our eyes is per se, right? It's because you know, we have these masks on or we're also talking virtually, um, but making eye contact is really important. It can show how engaged we are in the conversation and it also can help us to become less distracted. So I know this can be really hard, especially on these virtual meetings. So um, some things that I've done in the past is um, I video recorded myself talking to my um, computer and I watched it back to kind of see where my eyes are and, and trying to find out if I'm actually connecting with the person on the other side. Um, a lot of times I'll also put that person's picture right up by my camera or, or their virtual picture um, so that I can see them and also kind of read them as well. Um, but if you're, you know, meeting with them, try to have some eye contact. Don't stare at them, but, you know, be able to look away and whatnot, but make sure you're connecting with them um, with your eyes. And um, that's always a good thing. Um, number two is to be present and to be attentive. Um, I know we're all like probably multi-triple tasking <laughs> all day long. I know I tend to do this. Um, but, you know, try to Cut your email down, put your phone away, even, you know, you have your Apple Watch, um, we're connected so much today, is trying to put those things aside um, so that you're really in the moment and you're in that conversation um, with your mentor or mentee. So just try to be present in the moment, be ready to engage, and then um, your conversation will be much more, much more meaningful. And then number three is to keep an open mind. Um, I love this picture of these dresses because it was so fascinating to everyone, right? Is that we all don't see the same thing, really. Um, <laughs> um, but, you know, we don't all have the same experiences. I know we're all in commercial real estate here um, as part of commercial real estate women. Um, but we haven't all been brought up in the same uh, upbringing. We haven't had the same education. We haven't had the same life experiences. So we all experience things differently. So it's really important to listen and listen without judging and to allow the speaker to finish their thoughts and ideas. 
So this will help us to keep from jumping to conclusions or finishing their thoughts for them, um, allowing them to just continue through their thought process um, no matter what pace it's at. I know some of us are often move a little faster than other in the conversation. It's like really, you know, try to enjoy the moment and, and try to just allow that person to continue on and speak um, as much as possible. Number four, number four is try to mentally picture what they're saying. And, um, you know, this one is really one that I think is hard to do, but can add a lot of value. So focus on some of their words and phrases and try to create a mental picture of what they're saying or describing. This will keep you engaged and it'll help you keep from your mind or keep your mind from wandering um, during that time as you're really focused on some of the words and phrases um, that they're depicting. Number five is one that I personally have to work on and I figure uh, being in commercial real estate and a lot of us probably have to work on this is not imposing um, solutions. Not so much interrupting, but not imposing solutions. I know as an interior designer, my job is to come up with solutions and <laughs> try to find ways to solve problems. Um, you know, all day I'm doing this as part of my job. So when I'm talking with others, I often will let my mind drift to like, how can I help solve this problem? Or what advice can I give? Or, but that's not always, um, you know, how the conversation should go. And to be an effective listener, you should be focusing on what they're saying and not how you're going to respond to that. So by not thinking about a solution or how you're going to respond, you can be more 100% invested in what they have to say. So as being part of a good listener, um, you know, that's really important and one that I for sure um, need to work on. And then number six is simple, but will require some effort. Um, this is to wait for a pause and to ask clarifying questions only. So if you do not understand what they're saying, allow them to finish their point and topic and then ask a question to clarify at the end. So if somebody says something you're not right, sure of right away, instead of interjecting and disrupting that flow of conversation, allow them to kind of finish their statement or finish their thought and then ask a clarifying question. Um, sometimes you might find that they answer your question um, just by finishing their thought or that dialogue. Number seven is ask questions only to clarify understanding. Um, so I know it's really tempting too, especially um, with COVID, we haven't seen people in a long time. So when we're in this dialogue with each other and when we're talking, we might tend to ask questions that get off topic or spark another thought or idea. So then we ask a question of someone that isn't really pertaining to that conversation. And that really can shift the conversation and you can lose out valuable information um, that that person wants to share with you on the topic. Um, so to, it's, you know, okay if you get off track, but try to think about ways to get back on track or maybe ask a leading question that would get you back to the topic. Especially, um, I know it's important with some of these mentor meetings for us to try to, you know, be on task with our time because it is taking time out of people's day. Um, so just try to keep on topic and um, not try to, divert the conversation so much. And number eight is um, just so you should, you should try to envision what the people are saying as well. Um, just like envisioning them, sorry, but you should also feel what they are feeling. So not just envision, but also try to capture the emotion of what they're telling you or how they maybe felt in that situation. Um, you can be empathetic to their and react empathetically to what they're saying. And this can also create um, more of an engagement and a commitment within the conversation. Um, and that one I feel like is, is a little bit more hard in my mind to do sometimes, um, especially if you don't have some of the similar life experiences. Um, number nine, give regular feedback. So this can be through your body language, by nodding or smiling. So this is why it's really important to try to have cameras on, especially if you're doing this virtually. Um, or maybe share some short phrases that show that you're engaged with what they're saying. So, hey, that was a great opportunity, or that sounds like it was a great time. Um, maybe reiterate what they've told you. Um, this helps for sure with video calls, but also with that, so that you um, know that they're not frozen. And I know Lisa's not frozen because their lights just went off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna show that you're into my conversation. <laughs> oh, 
That's stupid good. automatic lights going off. <laughs> and then number 10 is pay attention to those nonverbal cues. So it's important. This is, again, another reason to just say, you know, to, it's important to, you know, be on camera if you are doing this virtually, um, but also your tone of voice, your posture, if you, you know, put your posture towards that person when you're talking to them. Um, it shows that you're engaged, that you're interested in what they have to say, and it also keeps you focused on, on what they're talking about. So I find, um, yeah, if I'm on a virtual call and, and people are, nobody has their camera on, it's like you're talking to yourself sometimes. So I think, um, you know, picking up on those nonverbal cues is, is, is really helpful to myself. But also to be aware of the cues that you're sending to a listener, um, because as they're giving you cues, you're giving them cues as well. So um, just try to be aware of um, your actions. And um, again, it's always good maybe to practice um, having conversations and you know video yourself or, or video some of those so you can go back and look and say, was I engaged in that conversation? Um, these are all good, good things that Diane um, talked about in the article. So with that, we just had a few thought starters that we wanted to share, and um, I'm sure some of you also have some thoughts as well, but, um, you know, we talked about practice looking at people in the eye. I think this is an easy one to practice without totally being awkward, but, um, you know, again, just working on putting that camera on. Um, I know sometimes it's a little awkward and uncomfortable because you see yourself. I know it's taken me a long time to get used to it, but... Um, it definitely goes a long way for feeling connected and engaged in the conversation. Again, looking for those nonverbal cues, um, working at not coming up with solutions um, during the conversation, but really listening and taking in what they have to say. And then also concluding conversations with a summary statement um, is always helpful. Just to make sure that you really did um, hear what they wanted you to hear or what they were trying to convey. So those are just some thought starters that we have for for you guys based on, on Diane's article and just wanted to share those with you as you guys set up your mentor meetings here in the future, so. Thank you, Jamie. Um, I know I learned a lot from these listening tips and reading the article. Um, there's so many communication challenges right now, especially some people are still working remotely. So I'm, I'm sure this will help all of us, not just in mentorship, but in the rest of our lives as well. Um, a few things I learned from the article that were really helpful to me. Um, there was a statement in there that said, when it's your turn to listen, don't spend it planning what to say next. And this one really hit home for me because I do that all the time. I'm Someone's talking and I'm thinking, oh, what can I say as a reply to that? And I'm not really fully listening. Um, so, so that's something I definitely have to work on. And another one I liked was, um, in task situations, whether at work or home, always restate instructions and messages to be sure you understand correctly. Um, I do try and do this at work sometimes, but um, I think it's helpful for all of us, um, whether, you know, with our spouses, our kids, or, or our coworkers. So um, that was another good one that, that I'm gonna work on more. Um, so, Hopefully everyone will use this with mentorship too. And um, if you want to reference the article, we will be putting it on the resources tab of our spreadsheet. So everyone can read the full article for themselves there as well. Um, so circling back to mentorship, we do want to spend the last few minutes here um, for discussion and questions. So um, we'll take a look and see if there's anything in the chat right now, but we were wondering if anyone has any questions about the spreadsheet or the program, if you want to if you want to take yourself off mute and ask the question or if you want to put it in the chat, you know, we'd love to try and help you out if anyone's having any difficulties or isn't sure how to go about um, some part of the program. We would love to help. Um, I do see. Can you put contact info in the chat so we can cut and paste? Yes, I will put. I will put my email address here and Annette's so that um, anyone has any questions about mentorship, you can reach out to us easier. I also just put it up on the screen. Great. Has anybody signed up to do or reached out to someone? 
performance. I know that was on my this weekend, but it got it got us to me. But I'm super excited because so many people signed up that there's a lot of opportunity for me to learn for sure and meet new people. So yeah, I know. I um I'm excited about how many people have signed up on the spreadsheet so far as well. So I need to I need to take a closer look at 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 the spreadsheet now and see what what topics I might want to reach out to some people about. Um, and yes, Laura, we are going to put the full article up on the resources tab of the of the mentorship spreadsheet, so everyone can access it there. Um, we're also always looking for ideas for additional topics. Um, you know, if there's you know we may not be able to add them until next year. Um, you know, when we send out a new spreadsheet, which will, will happen probably every year after membership renewal. Um, but yeah, any new, any other topics that you don't see on the spreadsheet that, that you would really like to see, reach out to us and let us know. We definitely would love the feedback. Awesome. Oh, Annette's got her email up there too. Thanks, Annette. And then also, I think, um, Lisa, you mentioned if people didn't get the link to the actual mentorship sheet, I know there were some issues with some people initially, but I think we tried to get back out and get in touch with everyone. Um, if not, just your email over to Lisa or even put your email in the chat right now. We'll make sure and get that link over to you. Or if you lost the link and you want it again. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, Absolutely. We're here to help. So, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, and then one of the other things is we are always going to be looking for um, good resources to add to the spreadsheet. Um, you know, so if you know of a good book or a podcast or article or or anything that you think um, that people would would gain insight from, you know, please let us know. We definitely want to put as much information and resources out there as possible. So um, we'd love to. We'd love to hear about any any good resources that we can add. Yeah. This is Tracy Taylor. I will just chime in and say, I think that you guys had some great listening tips in there, especially with everything being virtual. It's so easy to multitask and stuff. Um, and it's, it's so important, not just for mentoring, but for everything to be a good listener. And those were really great tips and also tips that you can use virtually to be a, to be, to listen, you know, be a good listener. So thanks. Thanks, Tracy. Yeah, I was a little self-conscious reading them because I'm like, I need to work on a lot of these. <laughs> no, so it was a good reminder just because I think we all get so caught up in our day and in our moments and, um, we're all like so busy and we're looking for the next task, right? It's like, we forget to be in the moment. We forget to make the eye contact. Um, you know, we forget to allow people to finish their thought and not be judgmental. Um, so it was, it, I felt like it was a great article. And um, Yeah, me too. Well, I don't really see any other questions. Okay, right. well, thank you so much for joining us, everyone. Um, we really hope this short presentation has been helpful to you. Um, please keep an eye out for our next Mentorship Monday in May, where Tracy Taylor and Gina Pendred will be talking about the most common ways we self-sabotage. So it should be an interesting one. Have a great week, everybody.